Hi, Kristen. Hi. Hey, 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 how are you? Good, how are you? Good, very, very well. Thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, I just wanted to reach out, introduce myself, and, and really just see if I can bring some value to what you're doing here on social media to build your real estate business. Yeah, I could definitely use it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. And I'm going to keep it super basic because I've just realized over the, over the years that, that most people, most real estate agents and just, just business owners in general, most miss the basics. Like I truly believe like this is basic stuff and most just try to overcomplicate it. They think it's more technical than it needs to be. So I'm going to kind of just dumb it down and just really show you some, some basics that, are, that will really help you with your overall branding and, and your overall lead capture. Okay. Okay. So, um, are you, first of all, are you, are you doing any, any online marketing or social media marketing or anything like that? Yeah, I've done the Facebook ads. Um, but that's, I mean, and then like posting on my page, mm -hmm. but other than that, I don't really know what else to do. Did you like boost the post or did you actually come over here to the ads manager and run it, run it to the ads manager? Um, there's a huge difference. I you actually use it through KW command. Gotcha. Okay. And your ads get approved and they're, and they, they run. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So are you, are you, so then are you capturing leads? Like are you, are the actual lead capture ads that you're running? Yeah. So I've gotten like, so it depends on the ad, obviously some of them I have gotten. Uh, I think the most I got was like five leads mm -hmm. on one ad. Mm -hmm. Um, there's been two ads where I got zero leads. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think I had another one with one lead. But so far, they have not converted to anything. I'm having a hard time getting anybody to even answer my call or call me back um, or yeah. even leave me correct information. Sometimes I'll call or email and it all just bounces back or gives me an invalid number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, so, and a lot of it, and, and that's, that, that just kind of brings me to my point. On, on these basics. Like a lot of people will go straight into lead capture, which is what you're doing. Facebook ad, capturing a lead. Most will go straight into that, which is what I call step three. Okay. But, and, and I just have this random five-step process, which I'll just, I'll share with you. It's simple. It's basic, but that's what I call step three. Okay. Without even focusing on step one or two. So most agents, for example, will go straight to step three without even knowing what step, step one and two is and not even realizing how much it affects their online presence. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm going to share with you real quick is the fact that if we just implement step one, step two, that would for sure help you with step three. And that's with even more leads. Like five should be coming in every day from, right. from, from what you're doing. If you're running the lead the right way, obviously there's different ways to run the, to run the actual lead or the, the actual ad, I should say, which is what I'm calling step three. Mm -hmm. there, there's a couple different ways and a couple different things that you have to make sure you do um, before you even run a Facebook ad, which is again, step three. But I'll kind of touch on that and kind of maybe share what <clears throat> my strategy on, on how that ad can be the most effective. But at the same time, it's step one and two that I truly believe is hurting your brand, which is causing people to maybe not opt in or maybe not give you the correct phone number or maybe not even answer your call. Mm -hmm. Because when they come and look you up on social media, there's a few things that are missing that hinders our credibility. Right. Because you got to understand on social media, no one knows you. So the same way you're on this call wondering, wondering who the heck I am, I'm on this call wondering who the heck you are. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know you either. Right. So yeah. that's how it is. Like whether we're Facebook friends, whether we're LinkedIn connections, whether we're following each other on Instagram, it does not matter. 99% of the people are not going to know us. Mm -hmm. So because someone saw one ad from you and they all of a sudden clicked on learn more and they may have gave up their name and phone number. Don't think that that person may not go and do due diligence on you or may not go and look you up on social media. And if they can't find you in many places, or if when they come to your Facebook page, there's a few things that are maybe missing, people are going to automatically judge you. They're going to automatically discredit you because they don't know you. And because there's information that isn't showing, which I'm going to show you what that information is, it's just hurting our credibility. Okay. And, 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 and on, on social media, real estate, real estate agents 
there's a million of you guys. There's actually a couple million of you guys. I can come to Facebook and type in real estate agents and see 50 freaking thousand of them. So it's like, you have to stand out is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You have to stand out and it's, and it's basic steps that I'm going to show you right now. That's going to really help that. Okay. And so, and what, I mean, this will be a quick call. This will be a 15 minute call. This is, this is basic stuff that I'm just going to really walk you through. And a lot of this you can do yourself. Um, but I just truly believe it's, it's hindering your, your social media branding, which is super important. Okay. So here's, here's what I can really, really show you. Um, we have the business page here and then we have the personal page over here. Mm -hmm. This is what I call step one. Okay. And you and I, we got here because you clicked invite to get these folks to like your business page. That's what I call step two. Mm -hmm. So we'll get there because if it wasn't for you doing that, we wouldn't even be on this call. That's so important. And that's what I call step two. But here's where we kind of want to start. This is step one. And, and it starts on this personal page because the people that you have over here, you have a handful out of the, out of the 854, mm -hmm. there's a handful of these folks that actually know you. Yeah. Maybe your in-laws, maybe your girlfriend, maybe your cousin, your neighbor, your coworkers, people that you actually know. That's okay. just a handful. As you take that number up, and the only reason why you would take it up is because you're building a business. If you weren't building a business, you'd be fine with the 300 people that you actually know. But because you're building a business, you're going to end up taking that number to 1,800. You're going to eventually take that number to 4,800. You're going to try to take that number up as high as you can because you're building a business. Same thing with LinkedIn, same thing with Instagram. The only, th the only reason why we want 50,000 followers on Instagram is because we're building a business. But here's the reality, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, Facebook, whatever. When we take that number up, 99%, actually, I'll just say 90. I'll give you, I'll give you 10%. 90%, which is still a huge number, nine out of every 10. Nine out of every 10 of the 854 don't know you. They don't live in the area. They're people just like me. Mm -hmm. And even if we do live in the area, let's say, for example, nine out of every 10 are not going to know you, but those people consist of two types of people. So for example, nine out of, out of every 10 don't know you. Who are those people? It's either going to be one of two. Number one, they're going to be, they're going to make up nine out of nine out of every, out of every 10 are going to make up of people like David are going to make up of people like me who found you virtually mm -hmm. connected with Kristen virtually. Again, this applies for any platform. It could have been LinkedIn. It could have been Instagram. It does not matter. Nine out of every 10 are going to be people are going to be either people like me who connected and found you virtually who for sure don't live in your area. I'm in California and I'll probably never be moving out there ever, ever, ever. And it, <laughs> it applies to anybody like you. You're never moving to California, right? So if I was a realtor out here in San Diego, when are you and your family moving here? Right. Never, right? And that's a large part of our friend list. I'm saying it's, I'm saying it's 99%, but I'll just use 90 for the example because it's for sure 90 as well. Nine out of every 10. Right. So my point is, is that number one are going to consist of people that you're connecting with virtually. And then the other type of person, which consists of the nine out of 10 are going to also be people who you meet locally that you don't know. So if, if I was out with my wife and we were at dinner and we came across, let's just say randomly, we sat next to each other. Randomly, we just happened to sit next to each other. And before you knew it, we started shooting the shit and we started a conversation. Mm -hmm. and it could have been about anything. We're, we're just having fun at a restaurant with our family. It could have been anything. We start, we strike a conversation because you're a realtor and because you're an entrepreneur and because you're a business owner, you would have found some way to sneak that in. You would have said in, Hey, Hey, David, by the way, I also do real estate. So if you guys are ever, you know, have any, any questions whatsoever, you know, buying, selling, whatever, here's my business card. Stay in touch. You would have for sure did that. We could have been at a luncheon. We could have been at church. We could have been at a restaurant. It, it, we could have been at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. It is your job to network. You would have brought up your business somehow, some way, and you would have slid me a business card. 
at least I would have hoped you did that right. because you're, you're a business owner. Hopefully, hopefully you're doing that, Kristen. You know what I mean? But right. my point is, is the fact that I met you locally. I live there. We happen to randomly be at the same restaurant with our families, but I never met you before in my life. It could have been at our, at our school, at our son's school, at our kid's school. It could have been at a field trip where you're just randomly meeting a parent. Mm -hmm. We live in the same area, but I never met you before. So nine out of 10 friends that we're connected with on social media are going to consist of those types of people. Number one, someone you met virtually, or number two, someone that you randomly met in the local area, but you don't know them either. Right. So here's step one. As we connect with them, because you're going to for sure tell me to connect with you on Facebook, this is the most non-aggressive, rather than asking for my phone number, connect with me here. So you're going you're gonna to naturally tell me to connect with you on Facebook. You're going to naturally tell me to connect with you on social media. Hopefully your social media is even on your business card. So I'm going to connect with you here. This is step one. As I come to this page, because you're building a business, there's information in this intro that is critical. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and just to kind of give you a little bit of context of where I'm coming from, I've just been doing this for a very long time, just online marketing, online advertising, really trying to crack the code of what it takes to capture a lead on the internet. I've been doing that for 20 years, okay. 21. So since 1999, I've been online marketing, advertising. But in 2010 is when I became a lender. So I was in the mortgage industry here in San Diego from 2010 to 2016. Very successful at mortgages. To this day, my best friend still owns a company. They do very, very well here in San Diego. So it was in that six-year run as a mortgage guy where I networked with a ton of realtors. And because I had a marketing background, I just knew that the majority of them were not leveraging social media. They were not leveraging Facebook advertising. And if anybody was even advertising at all, they were still spending it offline. This was 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013. Top producers, people that actually had a budget were still spending it offline. Where they're putting their face on a billboard, they're putting their face on a bus bench, they got their face everywhere, whatever. Offline marketing to get the attention of their local audience right? They were still doing that. So in 2016, I get sick and tired of mortgages and I leave the mortgage industry to start helping real estate agents with their social media marketing and Facebook advertising. So when you come to my page over here, my personal page, and this is all going to come back to step one. When you come to my personal page over here and you look at my friend list, this right here, it's a public list. So you can look at every single one of my 5,000. In 2016, when I leave mortgages, I come over here to Facebook and, and from a marketing perspective, I knew I wanted to help you guys, but how was I going to get, how was I going to get, get to you guys? Because I also knew marketing. So how was I going to get to you? Was I going to cold call every agent? Was I going to door knock? Cause there's a real estate office on every corner in San Diego. Was I going to door knock and go to everybody's office? Was I going to reach out to my previous network and say, Hey John, I know I helped you with your client last year. Do a, you know, do their first time, you know, qualify them for a home, but I'm doing marketing now. Can I do your marketing? Like, I didn't want to be that guy. I wasn't going to, I was not going to reach out to my existing network at all of realtors. So what I did in 2016 is I literally started moving all of my friends, my in-laws, my cousin, my brother, my actual friends, the couple hundred people who I actually knew on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I started moving them all over to Instagram. And in 2016, I filled up this 5,000 with real estate agents. That's how you and I are here today because I requested you. I've been doing that since 2016. And I've deleted like so many. Yes. It was, it was overwhelming. Right. And I yep. felt invaded. So I went from like mm -hmm. 1200 down to eight something. Cause I was yeah. like, I don't want all these strangers on my yeah. page. <laughs> yeah. Because that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? 99% of them you don't know, yeah. but because you're a built, because you're building a business, you actually have to expose yourself. So, mm -hmm. so, so, it, and it's only because we're building a business. If you were not building a business, you'd be fine with the 200 people, you know, Yeah. right. But because we're building a business, we're over here thinking we have to expand that number. And so in my case, I kicked everyone off and I filled up this 5,000 with nothing but real estate agents. So when you go and look at my, my friend list, and there's a reason why I'm telling you this, when you look at my friend list, every single one, every single one, except for one which is this one right here, Melina. That's my wife. 
Mm -hmm. She's the only one out of 5,000 who is not an agent. So the reason why I'm telling you this is that this started in 2016. I started requesting agents. And as you start to follow thousands of people, okay, when you follow thousands of people, Kristen, that all have the same interest, you start to see habits, you start to see patterns, you start to see what everyone's posting. And, 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 and because everyone has the same interest, everyone's posting somewhat the same thing. But when you follow thousands of people that literally all have the same job, you really start to see some patterns and habits. Mm -hmm. So since 2016, I've been literally seeing how thousands of agents are promoting their business how they're marketing their listings, how they're marketing their open houses, how they're trying to pitch themselves. I've been seeing it by the thousands. So although you've been in real estate for who knows how long and you seven have seven months, <laughs> how long? Seven months. Okay. Even if you've been in real estate for seven years, here's my point. You would still be looking at your business from your perspective. You'd be getting coached by your broker. You, maybe you have other agents that, that are coaching you on marketing, social media, whatever, but that's a handful. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you that I've been seeing it by the thousands. Yeah. And when you look at thousands, everyone's doing the same damn thing. And so what I've noticed, and this was in 2018, I ended up writing a book about this and it's called the social real estate agent, the social real estate agent.com, the social real estate agent, five steps to implement on social media to capture more leads and build your personal brand fast. That's an ebook that I put out in 2018 on these basic steps. Because as I started following agents, I'm like, man, every agent is just pitching themselves. That's the only post they're putting out is either, either a listing, they're promoting their open house, they're just pitching how awesome they are from a real estate side. Everyone's pitching, everyone's looking for that next deal. And then I started looking at pages and I'm like, dang, wait a minute, everyone's missing the basics. Like if branding is everything, which in real estate, branding is everything, everyone's missing that. On their business page, they're missing this. On their personal page, they're missing that. And I just started putting the pieces together and I'm like, dang, this is why most people are not capturing leads because that's what I call step three, but everyone's missing step one and two. And so what I'm going to show you here real quick is just based on branding. It's based on social media branding. It's based on capturing local leads and it's based on seeing what thousands of you guys are not doing mm -hmm. that's where these five steps are coming from so as i started looking at everyone's page i'm like wait a minute they're missing this they're missing that that's why this ain't working mm -hmm. and that's where these five steps came from so here's step one as i see thousands and thousands of pages this is where i came up with step one it all starts here the personal page is more important than the business page. The only reason why you even need a business page is, is if you're running Facebook ads. If you're not running Facebook ads, you don't even need a business page because all those people who like your business page, they're all people that came from here anyways. Right. So why am I posting twice? Why don't I just post here and more people are going to see it here anyways. I'll just keep this one page so I don't, I don't have to overwhelm myself with all these damn platforms. So it's here, the business page, don't get me wrong, it's, it's going to be important because I'm going to tell you why it's important in, 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 in step three. But if you weren't running Facebook ads, keep everything here. But here's my point. Here's what's going on. As I explained, person number one is the virtual person who met you like me. Person number two is a person you met at, at a local restaurant that you never met before. Those two people connect with Kristen here first. And when, when I come here, this is obviously the image. I can look at the image and be like, okay, beautiful, knowledgeable, professional, real estate. I can assume a lot of things from just family person, mother. I can assume a lot from just looking at the image alone. The image obviously is the first impression. But mm -hmm. also what sticks out is this intro. Mm -hmm. So right when I come to the page, automatically I see the intro. And so from your side of it all, being a business owner, there's information in, the, in this intro and it's super basic. It's super basic. I'm going to show, I'm going to show it to you, but it's super basic, but it's super important because now that we're in this social media world, there's links that we need to be showing right away, right away. And so here's what's happening. I come across Kristen's page and this is what she's showing me the intro owner, real estate agent, 
and then and then your dot com. Mm -hmm. I come across Candy's page. Let me go to Candy's page, and I don't know Candy no more than I know Kristen, but I come across Candy's page, and this is what she's showing me. Mm -hmm. So right away, a link to her business page, just like your link, but no other former. So I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend putting the this one right here if that if you're not with them anymore, or even you if you know, are I, with them. I am. I'm just. Okay. I don't know. I keep getting mixed information from other agents like, oh, you have to put Keller Williams or you're not in compliance, but it's like, but it's like, okay, well, the page is Kristen Gilardi Holmes, but I work with Keller Williams. So yes. I'm like, I guess I put both. No, you know. Keller Williams, if anything needs to be on your business page, but over here on the personal page, this is your personal page. Yeah. So put them on the business page, if anything, but not right here. Okay. You don't need any attention. You don't need anyone clicking like. None of your friends need to know about this link at all. Okay. Okay. So that that could be erased. That could we could delete that. But yeah, the first one up here, perfect. That that's where it starts. But then also, if you notice on Candy, she's also showing me Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, her website address, and it's not her KW link. She went out there and got her own dot com, mm -hmm. and when you click on it then it goes to her KW site, but she's not branding the KW link. Everything is matching under one name. Basic, super basic. And I'm telling you, I've seen it by the thousands. No one even has that basic step. So if I see your ad and all of a sudden I want to go look you up and I come to your page and I don't see anything, I just automatically discredit you. And that's just human nature. It's just, we, it's not that I'm looking for your links. I'm just saying that if I come over here, she just showing me a little bit more. Mm -hmm. That's all. I mean, it's not that she's better. It's not that any, it's just the human brain. I'm just, Oh, she's on Instagram. Hey, I'm on Instagram. Let me follow her there. Oh, she's on LinkedIn. Hey, I'm on LinkedIn. Let me follow her there. So it's not about having these up because all of a sudden we're a social media butterfly and we're going to post everywhere all the time. No, from a business perspective, I just want my brand out there. So I just need them active. I need them listed. And to take it up a step further, I want everything matching because we're building a brand. This is basic social media branding. It's making sure that all your links are up and all of them are active and matching. That's it. That's it. So again, as people see your ads, they're not only going to look you up on your personal page and maybe not see it there, but when they come to the business page, because you're running ads from this page right here, if I click about and I want to know who, more about Kristen before I give up my name and number, I see her ad. There's the learn more. I can click on learn more. She's asking for my name and number. Hey, before I even, because on an ad, let me, let me show you what, what, what the ad looks like or any ad, any random ad. It's all the same. As we're scrolling through our news feed and we're just seeing what our friends are up to, seeing what everybody's posting. And all of a sudden we, I'll just use this as an example. All of a sudden we come across a sponsored ad. This is an ad. So there's the video. There's the learn more button that's taking me to your landing page or your lead form. When I click on learn more, that's going to ask me for my name and number. But before I click that, look what also is showing is a link to your business page. Mm -hmm. So if I click on that link, it's going to say, Kristen, it's going to be this image. It's going to be your link. If I click on that link and I come to your business page and I click about, cause I'm going to look her up before I give her any of my information. I do it over here with about. All I see is this KW site. Now, reading, that's one thing. But right here where it says more info, everything is about social media. So show me your links. Let me know you're active. Let me know you're alive. I should see that right there, more info. I should see Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter. And you don't want to show me this KW site. Show me your .com. So for example, if I come to Candy's, let me click on her business page. I come over to her, to her business page. I click about because I want to dig in and see who she is. All she's showing me is hedge properties, hedge properties, hedge properties, hedge properties. It's just easier to the eye. And, and, and now she's putting out one name and one name only. This is basic. I mean, it's not that this is going it, to, it's not like this is going to capture a ton of leads for you, but I'm just saying what sticks out to the average consumer. It's this basic, mm -hmm. right? Like, so if you look at that hedge properties, you're not going to forget hedge properties. Right. Right. So, and this is LinkedIn and Twitter down here, or LinkedIn and Pinterest, but I don't know why the icon isn't showing. 
but Instagram, Twitter, her website. So rather than posting a KW site, whatever you're doing. So over here, you did it over here. Perfect. Kristen Gallardi KW. I'm just saying go the extra mile and everything needs to be under that name. Okay. That's step one. And then, and then you're going to get everything listed on the personal page over here and get everything listed in the about section of the business page. Everything should be matching this.com. So let's see. If, so rather than going the KW link and, and doing that and posting that everywhere, whatever name you're branding, go and get that.com. So let's even see if that.com is available. So Kristen Gallardi KW.com. And then when people click on that, then they go to your KW site. But at least I'm just using that one name to brand everywhere. Look mm -hmm. at that. It's available. You can get it for a buck. Huh. Perfect. That right there. And that's, and that's the dot com that you put on everything. On every social media platform, on your business card, that name goes everywhere. So do I want to include the KW though? So like say no. five years from now, I'm not good even question. with KW. <laughs> Very good question. No, you don't want to include it. Okay. I'm just using this as an example just okay. so you get the point, but no, you want to take that out for sure. Like okay. take it out, like name it something else, like Gallardi, Gallardi Estates, Gallardi, Gallardi Realty, like get a little creative with it, but, and, and, and obviously stay compliant. Cause I know there's a few words that you cannot use. Um, like if you're not a realtor, like, I don't think you could put realtor in that, in that name. Right. Like, so there's a few words that you probably cannot use, but there's a ton that you can. Okay. Um, I would do that for sure and keep it short. You don't want it to be too, too long. And it's just the username, like the title, you can name that whatever the heck you want, but the username, that's, that's what we're, that's what I'm saying. That's what all this is referring to is, is the username. What is after the forward slash? Okay. That's what I want to customize. And those are the top five. Let's go back to the, the, to Candy's uh, personal page real quick. Those are the top five. It's just Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest and Twitter. Those are your top five. So focus on customizing those mm -hmm. um, because every past client, every existing client, every future client you'll ever close escrow on is literally on one of those five. Now you got millions on, on, on YouTube, but that's if you're doing video. If you're not doing video, then, then those are the ones you want to focus on. Mm -hmm. Get the attention of, of those links right there. That's what I call step one. And again, after seeing thousands, thousands look like this. There's nothing there, right? So mm -hmm. I would just clean that part up a little bit. And that's, that's just what I call step one. Okay. So here's step two. Here's what I see by the thousands. Now, now, as I'm telling you, I've been doing this and speaking to, to agents on this exact, exact, exact topic, 100% of this exact topic since 2016. So since then, I've literally helped hundreds of agents with this exact with these steps i've spoken to thousands right like now you can't help everyone right you're going to speak to way more people than you're going to close escrow with right it's just how it is in sales i've spoken to thousands but i've looked at literally and this is for the record this is a fact i've literally looked at tens of thousands of facebook business pages when it comes to real estate agents since 2016. And 99%, this is a fact, 99% of you guys have 200 to 300 likes. So just like when I come to the personal page, this intro is the first impression. When I come to the business page, this like count is the first impression. Now the average consumer they're not looking for all your social media links. It's not like I'm over here looking for your Twitter. No, the average consumer don't, can care less. All I'm saying is that that just adds credibility to your brand. And over here on the likes, it's not that people are looking for a huge like number. It just adds credibility to your brand. When I come here and I see 282, I'm telling you 99% of you guys have that amount. I come across Kristen's and that's the first thing I see. I come across Candy's. Let's go to her business page. I come across Candy's, and before I even scroll, before I even scroll, I land here and I see 3,500. Mm. First impression. 
that right there. So as people are seeing your ad, they're clicking on your name. They're either going to click learn more and give up their name and number right away, or they're going to click on your link and come to your business page. When they come here, they need to see a big number. And again, it's not that people are, are, are intentionally looking and, and seeking that out. It's not that. It's just the fact that it's human nature. When I see a big number, I automatically assume that they know what they're doing. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So with you being in the business for seven months, you could, you could for sure be in the business for seven years. I speak to people who've been in the business for 25 years and they, they have 300 likes. And the crazy part is, is that that's what we automatically judge on. We automatically assume because that's perception. We automatically assume. And that agent or that broker that I'm speaking to, who's been in the business for 25 years and has 300 likes on social media, no one knows you. So I don't know that you've been doing this for 25 years. I don't know that you're a top producer. I don't know that you're number one in, in KW and have 10,000 people in your downline. I don't know any of that. I'm looking at a number and automatically thinking, yeah, you must have just got started seven months ago. Mm -hmm. And on social media, we don't need to give off that perception. I need to land here and see a big number because you only have my attention for a few seconds. Yeah. Impress the hell out of me. So... I come here, I land there, I see a big number. I come there, I land there, I see a little number. And that's what I call step two. Your next dollar, I would shut off any ad you got going on right now. The boosted post, shut them all off. Mm -hmm. I would shut them all off because the next dollar needs to go into taking that light count up. I would just say, you don't, need, you don't necessarily need to go to 3,500. That's higher than, than every agent. Like you won't find many, many agents that have, unless it's a company page like KW where it's a corporate page and there's 50,000 people who like the page and every single one of them is an agent. You'll find corporate page, pages that have a ton, but as far as a regular agent, you won't find many that, that are in the thousands at all. Um, at all, at all. 99% of you guys have a couple hundred just like this. Mm -hmm. So all you need is a couple thousand. Like you don't necessarily need 35. You know, you can, you can easily take this number 10 exit and go to 2,800 or 10 exit and just go to 2,000. And that alone, a comma in that number would completely put you ahead of 99% of agents when it comes to social proof, online credibility and perception. Mm -hmm. And that matters big time in today's world. So that's what I call step two is a simple Facebook ad to take that number up it's a one-time ad. It's not an ad you run every month or anything like that. That's a one-time ad and that changes the entire page. So number one, you have all those links listed. Everything is matching. Everything looks super legit. You have a high light count. There's a comma in that number. It's at 2000. Now automatically people think you've been doing it for seven years. Now you have the attention just from the, the basic perception alone. That's step two. Now here's step three. Okay, here's step three. Rather than just randomly posting this, because it's what everybody's doing. You take right. a market update, you take a listing, you take an open house, and you just post it on social media. Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever. Personal page, business page, whatever. That's what everybody's doing, is posting. Now, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, 90% of the people, it's really 99, but I'll say 90 90% of all of our connections on social media do not live in our area and they are never moving to our area. Mm -hmm. But those are the people who are seeing this post, random people. So what I call step three is forget about social media. Forget about posting on all these platforms. If you were a nationwide business, then, then that's how you would do it. Organic posting, posting every damn day on all these platforms. If you were a nationwide business and although you can help anyone nationwide, I get it. Like you can help anyone relocate. I totally get it. Even to a different state that you're not licensed in. I get it. You can help them, but that's not your ideal client. Your ideal client is literally in your backyard. That listing is down the street that you want. Like it's down the street, your market, the zip code you're farming is down the street. So step three is rather than taking these posts and putting them all over social media for everyone and their mother to see who do not live in your area and will never be moving to your area. Step three is when you could take these posts and you could take one a week and run a Facebook ad. 
in 2020, from this day forward, Kristen, you have to be running Facebook ads. There's no other way. Like there's absolutely zero. There's no other way. It's not going to happen by posting at all, at all, at all. You're going to have one people that like it. And that one person is going to live in a different state. And so everyone is posting whatever they're posting. It could be a listing. It could be an open house. It could be a market update when no one cares. That's why no one's liking it. Two reasons why no one's liking it. Two reasons. Number one is because Facebook only shows it to 1% of the 282. That's a fact. That's reason number one. No one likes it. Reason number two is because 90% of the 282 don't even live in the area because these are the folks who we invited from our personal page and 90% of these people don't live in the area. So the moment I see your post on a listing or an open house or any type of market update, it's not that I don't care out of disrespect. I just don't care because I'm not in the market in your market, right? So mm -hmm. posting over here is not going to net you anything. I need to take that post and I need, to, I need to run it to my local area where I'm doing business. And the only way I can do that is with a Facebook ad. So my whole step three is when you could take posts like this and run one every single week, targeting your local area as if it was your religion. Mm -hmm. That's step three. You, and, and I always tell people, if you have to go get a part-time job, if you have to have some type of part-time hustle and sell stuff on the internet, if you have to have a garage sale every weekend to free up a couple hundred, if you have to stop going out to dinner so many times a week, if you have to stop going to Starbucks so many times a day, if you have to free up our expenses to be able to put a couple hundred a month into your Facebook advertising, you have to do that. I make, I'm on a mission this year to, to portray that passion and knowledge that I have on how important that is for your business. I'm on a mission to go tell a couple, a couple million agents on how important that is. You have to be doing that. And this applies for any local business owner. You could be a dentist that I'm speaking to right now. You could be a local chiropractor. You could own a yoga studio in your local area. And it's the same strategy. If we're a local business owner, we have to be running Facebook ads because it's the only, it's the most powerful and it's the least expensive way to get the attention of our local audience. It's mm -hmm. the only way. Facebook ads, it's not going to happen with a magazine ad, a newspaper ad, a radio ad, a TV commercial. You're not going to put your face on a billboard. You're not going to put your face on a bus bench. You're, you're not going to do that. You're not going to door knock and you're probably not going to cold call because you probably don't have that budget to buy Zillow leads. Right. So how else can we get the attention of our neighbors without having to break the bank or put in all the sweat equity? It's a Facebook ad. You can literally have this Facebook ad running 24 seven to your local area while you're sleeping. So step three is when you can literally start doing this every week and that's how you penetrate that local area with your face and with your information. It's a Facebook ad. And I speak to agents all the time where they're like, David, yeah, I boosted a post. I ran one for 20 bucks and that was back in January. I'm like, really? I'm like, shit, I'm telling you to do one every week. Like that's why you guys aren't seeing the, 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 the ROI is because most are still Mickey Mouse in it. And most are still doing one here or there. The strategy, step three, is every week. Every week. Every week, you got to be running an ad. Every week. And here's the reality. Are you, are you married, Kristen? You're married. Are you married? Yeah. Okay. Here's the reality. Here's a fact. Here, here, here's, here's the numbers for you. If your husband were to take you to dinner tonight, and I use this example because it's so freaking real, it's not even funny. If your husband were to take you out to dinner tonight, and, and I'm talking like a, like a decent dinner, not, you know, chilies or anything. I'm talking about like a nice steak dinner, for example. Nothing crazy expensive, but I'm just saying something decent, right? He's taking you on a date. Yep. If he took you out to dinner tonight, he would spend more on that dinner than what you would spend running this as a Facebook ad for the entire week. Right. That's a fact. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm saying if we got to stop going to Starbucks, if we have to stop going out to dinner, if I have to get a part-time job, whatever the hell I have to do to be able to run an ad every week to my local area, that's what I have to do. How much do you put into each ad? Cause I've been trying to keep them like, as soon as one ends, I try to start another one, but yes, I, I've probably been limiting it, I guess probably anywhere from 15 to $20 a week or per ad, just cause I don't really know. You, you want to, you want to definitely step it up. You want to be thinking like at least, at least $10 a day. 
So okay. 70 bucks a week, 280 a month. That's what you want to be budgeting for Facebook ads minimum. And then after that, you, you can, you can scale up, but, but what makes it so, and I know that might seem like a lot of money for most people up front when it's like, man, David, I, I, got, I don't even have that budget. I get it. But at the same time, that is freaking pennies. That's pennies. That is pennies when it comes to your business. Right. And I get it how you get it, how, how you guys have a ton of overhead and expenses and you got to pay for all these damn random things in real estate. I get it. But from a marketing perspective, there's nowhere in the world you're going to go put a couple hundred bucks to and see some type of effect ROI. There's nothing. You can't even print flyers nowadays for a hundred bucks. Like it's yeah. a joke. Like it's so funny. Like it's, it's crazy. So at that, at that weekly budget, there's no other way I can get the attention of my local area. I have to run it. It's, it's either that or I continue to do what I'm doing. And I'm just convinced because I've spoken to thousands of you guys, no one is doing it. No one's doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so step three, and here's the deal also with your ads. Step one, having all those links will help it. Step two, the moment I come here and I see a couple thousand likes versus a couple hundred, that's going to help it. But what's going to also help your ad, which is step three, weekly ad, is when you can start giving me something, when you can start giving away something of value for free. So for example, you probably have random ads right now on maybe a market update, maybe a buyer's list, maybe a listing. These are what consist of most real estate agents ads. I'm saying tweak it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Your weekly ad needs to be a free download. Your weekly ad, you need to be giving away a free seller guide. You need to be giving away a free buyer guide. So rather than running another listing ad, if, it, if it's a listing, that's one thing. Run an ad on the listing for sure. But if we don't have a listing, and, it, and even if I did have a listing, that's one week. What about the, the other three weeks? The other three weeks are going to consist of ads promoting a free seller guide. Click learn more. It'll take you straight to my page where you can download your free 2020 seller guide. And this seller guide is a simple PDF, five page, 10 page, giving people tips on what to expect if they were to sell their house, giving them tips on what they can expect in the buying process. Mm -hmm. The importance of speaking to a lender, making sure you're pre-approved, the importance of your FICO score, the importance of your debt to income ratio. All these things that you know is important in buying your, your W-2s, your pay stubs, your freaking tax returns, all of this stuff that you already know, Kristen, when it comes to the process of buying, you put together in a simple PDF and that becomes your bait. So now as you run ads, you're not just promoting yourself, but you're promoting a free download. Mm -hmm. Click learn more. It'll take you straight to my page where you can download your free guide. Talk to you soon. You're either doing that in an image and I would, I, would, I would recommend an image of you. So if you're not going to do video, which video outweighs everything, video is freaking King Kong. If that was you on video, you would capture more leads than you could possibly handle. But if it's not you on video, like for example, video would be, would be something like this. Let's say I was the realtor. Hey guys, this is David. And, and this is a video that I'm recording on my cell phone. Nothing mm -hmm. fancy. I don't need a camera crew. None of that on my cell phone. And it's a two minute video. Hey guys, this is David. I just wanted to come on, on video real quick and, 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 and give you guys my top five tips on increasing the value of your home before you decide to sell. I know a lot of folks are going to be selling this year and I wanted to just kind of give you my two cents on what you want to kind of make sure you implement before you even list your house. Tip number one, curb appeal. Make sure that the landscaping, I can go on for shit. I can go on for two hours and talk about that, Kristen. Mm -hmm. like, like I'm telling you two minutes. So in two minutes, one simple video, giving me five tips on, 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 on what to do to increase the value. If I decide to sell it, that's one video. Another video I could talk about the difference between hiring a real estate agent versus trying to list it for sale by owner. What's the difference? Hey guys, this is David. I know a lot of people are thinking they could sell their house on their, on their own. Let me tell you the difference and let me, let me kind of break it down agent versus for sale by owner. Like you already know, you already have so much knowledge, Kristen. It's not even funny. Mm -hmm. If you were to break that down, but stay on topic, either we're going to talk about buying for four weeks, one ad per week, or we're going to talk about selling for four weeks. 
that two minute video of, of you educating me on the process. And at the end of the video, you're saying, Hey, and by the way, click learn more because that's what you're going to see in every ad. So as, as, as you just scroll through the newsfeed, every ad's going to say, learn more. Anytime you see a sponsored ad, it has that learn more button. This one actually requests time. This guy's looking for, look, perfect example, perfect example, perfect example. This guy's doing it. This is an agent, HomeSmart. So he's doing a, a video and look at how short the video is. It's a freaking 20 second video. And when I click on request time, what he's doing, he's obviously going for an appointment. So I click on request time. He takes me straight to this one page where he's capturing the lead. He's requesting time. What I'm saying is give away a download. So before you throw me in the back seat, why don't you take me on a date first? Mm -hmm. Give me something of value. I don't want to request a time with you. I don't even know you, bro. Like I'm barely seeing your ad and you're taking me, you're, you're trying to have me jump in the back seat right away. I don't want to talk to you just yet. So if I was him, I would be saying, Hey guys, we put together a 2020 seller guide that is going to knock your socks off. This guide is going to teach you everything you need to know about selling your house in 2020. Click learn more. It'll take you straight to my page where you can download your free copy. Talk to you soon. So now your weekly video, your weekly ad that is targeting your local, local backyard is now just based around giving away something of value, which is a free download. And now you just start to load up your pipeline with tons of people that are interested in selling or tons of people that are interested in buying because you gave them away something for free. First of all, you educated them on the front end. Again, that's, that's either going to be an image of you and you're going to have to write out that text. Or it could be a simple video on your cell phone verbally telling it to me in 20 seconds. Simple, man. And, and, and all this guy is doing, which he's smart, this is a guy that lives next door to me. He has to. Like, there's no way. He's a local agent. There's no way he's marketing nationwide. Unless maybe he is. Maybe he's recruiting a team. I don't know. I had never seen him before. But I would be assuming that he lives in my local area. He's trying to get business in his local area. This guy is running an ad while he's at dinner with his family. That's what I call step three. When you can do that weekly. And then step four is when you could take me to a landing page, which is what I think command is all based on. You guys have landing pages. Take mm -hmm. me to a landing page and capture the lead. That's it. Facebook ad step three, landing page step four. You get the lead name and number. That's step five. Step five is email automation. Now that lead is in my CRM. And now that lead is receiving emails on my behalf. That's step five. So I know that was a ton of information right there, but step one, list all those links. Step two, take that like count up. So people take you more seriously in the first second. And then step three might not be now, like I'm just assuming, you know, people don't have the biggest budget. So step three might not be right now, which is a weekly ad. And then step four, you have command for your landing page and your, and step five, your email automation. So right now, what you can really start first is getting all these links listed and then, and then running that like ad to take that number up. That's where your next minute and your next dollar should, should go. Okay. You know, so, so, um, that like ad, it might, I mean, if you're running it at a, at a command, I don't even think you can run a like ad or, or, or anything like that. I don't, I don't know because I run all my ads through Facebook. Like this is the ads manager and this is what's, co this is what's connected to your command. But I don't know if, if you can run the like ad from, from the command. So if anything, like I can, I mean, I can easily run that ad for you. Like you just obviously, you know, you pay for it. Just tell me whatever your budget is and I can easily run that for you. Um, but all you're going to owe me is a good review. Okay. So it just, it just comes down to your, like, you don't need to go that, that high. Like, I mean, in Candy's case, she went up to 3,500. Like you don't need that many, but putting a comma in that number is what you want to do for sure. So just look at this for the first month. I would look at it maybe, maybe the first 30 days. What, what could be our budget? And that's a one-time ad. So that's not an ad you're going to run all the time. It's a one-time ad. Mm -hmm. Like what can we put, what's our budget? What can we put towards that one ad? And I can, I can kind of give you an idea of what, 
what we can expect, like how many likes, you know, we can expect. What's our budget? Okay. Like, that's a real question. Like, what's our, what, what do we have? Like, what's our budget for this one ad? What can we put towards that one ad? Um, I guess I could probably try to do 50 or a hundred dollars for first ad. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you put, let's just put like, if you put a hundred bucks and you put that over the next 30, 30 days, mm -hmm. that number would be at 1200 in the next seven to 10 days. Okay. And that's all you would need. Like, that's all you would need. That's, that, that's all you would need. No agent is even going to come close to that number, like at all, at all, at all. So that would be the first ad. And then after that, if anything, we can always jump on another call and I can walk you through the, the right. I mean, you're doing it through command. I'm sure you have coaches and people are teaching you how to do it that way. But what I want to also show you is how to, how to go straight to Facebook and just run it here. Okay. Because it's, I think it's easier as well. Like command, it makes it, it makes it seem easier, but I know there's a lot of things that they're, that, that, that they're bypassing to make it easier when all I got to do is go straight to Facebook and it's easy there as well. And I can easily show you how to do that. Like we can always jump on a call. That's step three. We can always jump on a call later and I can, I can just kind of show you how I run ads and, and you can learn that way as well. But okay. right now let's just do the like ad. So yeah. 1200 is where that number would be in the next few days and, and boom, but you're going to owe me a good review. Can you give me a good review if I oh, really, okay. yeah, of course. You're awesome. Okay. So here's all I need you to do. Are you on a computer? Yeah. Okay. Go to your business page real quick. All I'm going to do is just request access to this page so I can run the ad. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, all I do is I type in luxury homes. Like you're, you're in Colorado, right? Yeah. Okay. So when I set up the ad, I type in luxury homes in Colorado and Facebook pulls hundreds of images of beautiful homes. And I just use one of their, one of their images. So later on, what I'll do is I'll email you. First of all, I'll email you a video on step one. Okay. So the first email I send you will be a video that I put together because I have a YouTube channel. So I have a ton of videos. I'll send you a video on step one just to make step one super easy for you. You'll watch the video and you'll be able to link everything and customize everything in two minutes. Okay. I'll email you that. And then I'll also email you a picture of the actual ad once I, once I set it up today. Okay. So all I'm going to do is just request access to your page so I can run the ad. So let me know if you receive a notification. And if you don't, then I'll just manually walk you through it. Let me know if you get a notification now. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So it should be inspired digital. So just follow it through and then it's going to ask you for your password and that's it. And then I'll be able to run the ad uh, today. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Okay. Respond. Okay. Let's see. So the video that I send you, Kristen, it'll it'll show you how to link everything on the personal page and on the business page. So over here in the about section, I want you to list everything over here as well. think that worked okay let me just um, refresh my side real quick um, awesome perfect okay cool okay so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add myself and then once once we're done like because our our target goal at that budget, that's going to take that number past 1,200, but let's just call it 1,200. Once, once that light count hits 1,200 within the next, let's just call it seven to 10 days, mm -hmm. you can always go back to your business page and right where you clicked on respond to request, if you refresh it, in fact, if you refresh it right now, if you refresh it, it'll say remove. Mm -hmm. So once we're done with this ad, you can always remove me from your page for sure. Okay. Okay. So... All I got to do is just set it up. I'll email you. And then what card can I use for the ad? Either Visa, Master, or Amex. Um, I'll, I have to go to the bank first. I don't have the money in there right now. No worries. So, Whatever you need to do. Yeah, because I've got cash in my wallet, but I got to go put it in the account. <laughs> awesome. Email me. I'll email you step one. And okay. that's the video for, the, for step one. And you can just reply to that, or you can always call me. I'll just 
you know, message you my phone number, whatever you want to do. Just let me know so I can put the card on file so I can start the ad tonight. Okay. I can do that. Cool. Okay. I'll email you step one and then just message me if you need anything and then we'll get started today. Okay. Awesome. Cool. All right, Kristen. Thank you so much. I'll email you right now. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.